Well, Matt, we, I just heard that we have Mr. Nugent, so I want to bring him in right away. I want to get to this interview as soon as we can. Ted Nugent, welcome to the program. Happy summertime in spite of the crazy world around us. Yeah. Hey, trust me, I'm well aware. I'm in Michigan, your home state of Michigan, so I'm completely trapped. And I want to ask you what you think about Dictator Whitmer. Well, you know, I was warning everybody during the campaign what she was made out of and what she represented. And, you know, if you're in the party where you wave a paper on the house floor and say, you don't need to read this, you need to sign it to find out what's in it. I think that's your modus operandi, and I tried to warn the great families of Michigan. But I got to tell you, it wasn't the liberal scourge that is ruining Michigan. It's the conservatives, Tudor, that don't vote. And we're on a crusade here to wake these people up to the most important obligation, the duty of every American, especially in Michigan that's gone to hell, to vote. If you believe in God, family, country, if you believe in the Constitution and individual rights as guaranteed by that sacred document, you have to vote. And the horror is the good families of Michigan do not vote in meaningful numbers, and they gave it away. I was shocked to hear this. We, we have about two minutes left in this segment, so I want to ask you. I was shocked to hear this. Give us some statistics on that. How do you know people aren't voting? Because, I mean, I really didn't believe that this governor would get in, but she did, and I was shocked by that. But you're telling me it's our fault, and I believe you. Yeah, it really is a curse of apathy, and it's what has really opened the door to the socialists, the communists, the America haters on the left that have taken control of otherwise great states, and especially my beloved birth state of Michigan. Oh, how I yearn for her return. But we have the statistics, and I'll share them with you. If everybody would go to huntthevote.org, huntthevote.org, we bought the statistics. And the God family, country, constitution families are best represented by the hunting families of this country, and they vote in absolutely embarrassing low numbers. So we're galvanizing this voting army for God family, country, and we believe we can do it now that we've learned our lesson. I hope we've learned our lesson. Well, I'm, I, I hope we have. We have about one minute before the end of this segment, but I want to say I hope we have because I think you know that our fishermen were told for a long time they couldn't even go out and fish. So do you think that's a big enough lesson for people to go out and vote? I think so. I think we see these great protesters exercising their First Amendment rights to uh, protest illegal, unconstitutional, oath-violating decrees by people like Governor Whitmer. And you can tell the good Michigan militia, for example, sure they were armed and they were protesting, but there was no arson, there was no violence, there was no mom and pop uh, family businesses burnt to the ground. You can see the contrast between the good families of Michigan protesting against a tyrannical governor and the looters and the arsonists and rioters in Minnesota. So uh, I'm very proud of the good people of Michigan. I think we're now manifesting that uh, we've taken it on the chin and we're not going to take it anymore. I agree with you, and you're going to stay with us, and I appreciate that because we're going to come right back after this break with Ted Nugent and talk a lot more about Michigan voting and free speech. You don't want to miss it. Stay here. We'll be right back. Welcome back to America's Voice Live. I'm Tudor Dixon alongside Matlock, and I want to bring back in the one and only Ted Nugent to the program. Ted, we're so glad you stayed with us through the break. We have a lot more to talk about. Now, we have this situation with Democrats. We've been talking about it all week with Democrats who have been lying, and, and this COVID-19 situation has really exposed this. I want to play a clip for you of our own Gretchen Whitmer and have you respond to this. Take a look. difference he jokingly asked if marrying if being married to me might move him up in the queue obviously with the motorized boating prohibition in our early days of COVID-19 he thought it might get a laugh it didn't and to be honest I wasn't laughing either when it was relayed to me Ted think about this we are all trapped in our homes we're told that she's opening up 
upper the upper lower peninsula peninsula and the upper peninsula but we are not supposed to travel there and then her husband asked to be first in line to get the boat out and she acts first she told the state first she told the whole state this was a rumor and then she comes out and says well he thought it was funny i mean how did how should the state respond to this kind of behavior well you respond uh with anger and uh heartbreak really that people have weaseled their way into such position of powers that they abuse those powers every day in the most egregious and dishonest way. Gretchen Whitmer is a liar. She just lied there. She said, uh, to be honest, she wouldn't know honesty if it landed in her lap. She is just proving to us, you know, what Nancy Pelosi and all the Democrats represent. Remember Nancy Pelosi, who I guess is Gretchen Whitmer's hero, or maybe it's Hillary Clinton in between uh, computer smashings, <laughs> uh, where she said, uh, that the MS-13 gang murderers, rapists, and torturers had a decent spark and that they were decent people. That's all you really need to know about the Democrats, the dishonesty, the hypocrisy, do as I say, not as I do, whether it's Gretchen Whitmer or uh, Gavin Newsom or Cuomo in New York saying, you're a bad person, I'm condemning you if you don't wear a mask, then his own family doesn't wear masks. I'm condemning you if you don't stay home. His own family doesn't stay home. That's Gretchen Whitmer. That's the Democrats. Those are liberals. Those are the uh, power abusers and the criminal corruption that we are so ashamed of in Michigan. And remember, I live in Texas now, so I know what freedom looks like and smells like, and I live it every day. But I fight constantly because Michigan is the greatest state, or it used to be, but now it's controlled by the Hillary Clinton Whitmers of the world, and we have to take her back because that spirit, that work ethic, the, the arsenal of democracy where I was born, right now politically, it's gone. And it breaks the hearts of really hardworking families in Michigan. This is something that I tell, I, I talk every day on the show. Matt always, he's, my co-host is from Texas and he jokes with me, why are you in Michigan? And exactly what you said, it's the best state. It's so beautiful. It's, it, it's such a wide ranging opportunity of excitement and adventure. And there's everything here in this state and it is being ruined. And, and for conservatives in general, one of the things that's happening to conservatives in general across the country is that we're being silent. So I wanna ask you about what the, what the president did yesterday with the executive order because he is not okay with what Twitter is doing. What do you think about conservative voices being silenced? I can share personal experiences. When I was helping uh, this uh, candidate, Donald Trump, in 2016, because it was clear and obvious and much appreciated that he was not political, he was not an insider, he was not part of this toxic, power-abusing deep swamp that he's helping to drain right now. And I could tell that he was a status quo smasher, and we need more status quo smashing going on. But I'll tell you, you know, Texas is great, but Michigan used to be the greatest. And when he is now identifying the Nazi communism of censorship, the control of leftist liberals, of the free speech of conservatives, like Lois Lerner using the power of the IRS to control conservatives trying to help different charities and different uh, members of our society. Uh, why she's not in jail is one of the great tragedies of our failed justice system. But what President Trump is doing is really reflective on the Nugent family. During that campaign, I, campaign, I had between 20 million and 36 million reach on Facebook. After the president was elected, Tudor, I've been knocked down to only three million reach, and they keep playing with that because they, they bring in these lying fact checkers who need their facts checked. Because when they check facts, like the president tweeted the truth, the, the evidence is irrefutable that widespread mail-in voting, it does create fraud. And people have been convicted of that fraud. So what the president said was true, the fact checkers Lie. So God, God bless President Trump. How mind bending is that, that the fact checkers, this is exactly what they're doing. They're going in and they're fact checking with false information because they can warp the minds of all Americans this way. The power that these companies have 
is astounding. But in Michigan, I know I, I love the way you talk about my state. I don't get to talk about my state with such love and care every day. So I love the way you talk about my state. And I did look up Hunt the Vote, and I saw that on Hunt the Vote, only 50% of hunters are voting, which shocks me because there is so there are so many votes that affect hunting in Michigan. And and even a few years ago, the the vote on wolves and and then we de we decided here in the Lower Michigan we shouldn't be hunting wolves because we don't see wolves, and so hunters aren't getting out and voting. And that when I read that, I was like, this is the problem. So you're very interested in voting in Michigan. You're so interested in voting in Michigan that you actually are trying to get one person out of office and you have a hat I would love to talk about but I can't because it has a bad word on it but it has something to do with that particular person you want to tell me about that well you know we really have to keep God family country the Constitution individual freedoms and I think that that spirit of a traditional American family values is most definitively embodied by the hunting families conservation families if you want real environmental upgrade, you're going to get it from wildlife habitat, which the hunting, fishing, and trapping families of Michigan and the country, we pay for. We demand healthy habitat, not just to produce the deer and the game that we kill and eat, but it produces songbirds, and ultimately, it produces quality air, soil, and water. So huntthevote.org is the battle cry to get that incredible army of conservative voters to show up to the polls. I'm doing an event in Wisconsin, and I'll be coming back to Michigan to do it. We're going to do it all across the country because that conservative army is best represented by the licensed hunting families of this country. And Michigan is wall-to-wall -wall conservationists and conservatives, but it's meaningless unless they vote. So that's the battle cry, and we're going to do it in particular that you're hoping to get out uh, one Rashida Talib who is out there with a foul mouth every day and, and and I mean it's shocking because here she is a Muslim woman and you wouldn't see a Christian woman out talking like this but I have to say I've always thought that the Muslims were a little bit harder on their group that you had to have a certain decorum about you but not in the case of Rashida Tlaib because she can go out there and yell the MF or word and talk about the president and they don't seem to care but you do care because you have endorsed Al Lemo and he is with us. I want to bring him into the conversation so that everybody can meet the person who will be taking over that district and taking it taking it back for the United States and taking it back from the squad. Al, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tudor. It's great to be with you. Great to see you again. And uh, thank you to you and uh, Steve Gruber and AVN and a special thank you to Mr. Ted Nugent for his early uh, endorsement of me. It's meant a great deal to my campaign to have your endorsement. And um, I'm just raring to go with it, and uh, we're racking up more endorsements as we go, and we are looking forward to going into this campaign and winning the seat back for the Republican Party. Well, so, Ted, you endorsed him. Tell us what you think is the best part about Al. Well, Al is a conservationist. He certainly uh, adheres to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, God, family, country, uh, the uh, the way the Constitution has outlined self-evident truths that we have individual rights from God and we just happen to have a document that guarantees those rights. And Al will take on what is truly one of the greatest embarrassments in the history of Michigan. Remember, I was born in Detroit in 1948 and the work ethic and the productivity spirit, that rugged individualism, the man in the arena was Detroit. It was Michigan and it still is. But when you've got somebody like uh, Rashid over there uh, who believes in genital mutilation and is voicing hatred for the traditional American values, we've got to get a guy like Al in there because Al represents we the people in the asset column of Michigan. And I'm afraid his opponent represents the people in the liability column of Michigan. And we can't handle that anymore. I just want to ask you something because when you talk about hunters, you talk about them as conservationists, and that's that's something that a lot of our young people have been told is not the case. They've been told that hunters are bad. So if you could really quickly just explain to our young viewers why you explain it that way and how hunters help Michigan and, and why Al is the important person to defend that. 
Well, I again, I've been clean and sober for 72 years because of the the great cleansing powers of nature. Um, I laughed at all the hippies and the beatniks with the drooling and the puking and the dying that they thought was a party. And none of that qualifies as a party in the Nugent family or in any of my friends' lives. And what I learned from my mom and dad in the outdoors is that you need to live the Native American lifestyle of not just respecting these renewable wildlife resources, but to revere God's miraculous creation that provides sustained yield food, clothing, shelter, medicine, tools, weapons, but most importantly, that spirit of connection with the good earth that provides life itself. And to those who have been brainwashed by the propaganda ministry saying that hunters are murderers, deer have babies every year. So the herd expands, but the ground does not. And if you want quality air, soil, and water, you got to make sure that the wildlife habitat is in prime healthy condition. Condition, And the only way you can have prime wildlife habitat to produce quality air, soil, and water is to reduce the productivity every year to make room for next year's spawns and cubs and calves and all the wildlife that will be renewable. Plus, look at me, I'm 72 and venison and a clean and sober lifestyle, which is really maximized in the great outdoors. It'll keep you bright eyed and bushy tailed and cocked, locked and ready to rock, Doc. And those that are drooling and comfortably numb, not so much. <laughs> you do not look 72. I give you that. I am very impressed. So, Al, tell us, when you get this position, when you take over for Talib, what will you do for the people of Michigan? Well, it's my understanding that the main concerns of the people of, uh, of Michigan, this district, frankly, the whole country, are things like their health care, their jobs, uh, the basic nuts and bolts of earning a living, which is being shut down with the present crisis. Uh, we've got to get that back, first of all, that's first on the agenda, and come up with a health care scheme that uh, doesn't ruin people and jack up their insurance premiums and make health care uh, less available and more expensive. So we'll be working on that. We think we've got some ideas that will get that accomplished. So uh, again, there's jobs, uh, training programs that are pertinent to the jobs that are available uh, that will be uh, high wage and um, pertinent to the kind of industries that we have in the district and uh, that we'll be, bring, we'll be bringing back to the district. Uh, of course, we've had a setback with the uh, acts that the, uh, the uh, Democrat governors have been taking to the booming Trump economy. Uh, we're going to have to undo a lot of that. And uh, so there are some handicaps to be overcome, but we think we can do it. Well, it sounds like Ted thinks you could do it, too. I want you to quickly tell us where people can find your campaign and where they can donate. Well, my website is lemo2congress.com. That's L-E-M-M-O, uh, the word 2, T-O, or the number 2. Either one works. Lemo2congress.com. If you can't afford a donation at this time because perhaps you've been laid off or, or fear of being laid off or something like that on account of what's been done to us in this, in this country, um, certain volunteer effort is available in a number of respects, and that's also available on the website. You can sign up for any number of things there. And if you want to make a financial donation, that would definitely be appreciated. Every little bit helps. It's, it's expensive to run a campaign like this. And we've had uh, you know, organizations across the board of every kind that have to de uh, depend on donations from the public have been struggling through the present time. And uh, our campaign in, in the political realm is no exception. So anything you contribute is very much appreciated, very much needed. And uh, I want to thank all those people who stepped forward already who have done that from every state in the union. Uh, thanks to every one of you, and um, we will we will uh, try to earn the trust you've, you've placed in us. I, I really am humbled by that kind of a commitment, uh, that kind of trust you've placed in me, and I do not intend to disappoint anyone. Thank you very much, everyone. No, I believe you. I Al was here in my office, and this is a man who is working for the people. Ted Nugent, Al Lemo, thank you so much for coming on today, and we will continue to promote your campaign, and hopefully we'll have you both back on soon. Well, thank you, Tudor. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. I love Michigan. <laughs> Me too. Good. Thanks very much again. Excellent. Thank you. Bless you all. Thank you. God bless you.